and I'm going on to the car. I go ahead and start going. <laughs> <laughs> and I pass her before she gets there. Smart, <laughs> yeah. It's not funny, but we didn't laugh. Yeah. It's all sick Be worse, yeah. yeah. Well, it is true. I'm slower than it is. Well, we had uh, part one of this message last week. And, um,. Uh, I left it with um, that we need to put away from us uh, the things of the world and consider ourselves dead and unresponsive to evil desires like impurity, uh, lust for evil, and materialism and so we're going to pray and then we're going to drop back to verse 7, 8, 9 real quick and then move on from there. We were in first, uh, not first, no. we were in Colossians uh, chapter 3 and we had started with verse 5 we were up to 12. Father, thank you for the day and for what you do for us. And uh, Sometimes we don't know what you do for us. You do so much. That we're not paying attention. Help us to pay attention to what's going on in our life. How you're moving and how you're lifting us up and and uh, healing us and giving us strength when we need it. And all the things you do. Don't ever let us forget that. That's where thankfulness is born. Is in what you do for us. And Lord, let us be thankful. It's a, a sincerest form of worship, thankfulness. Touch us today and uh, give us the uh, Spirit's uh, guidance in all things. Help me to preach. Help uh, each one here to listen. And all of us to do as you show us to do. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. If you go to Colossians 3, and um, he was talking about uh, these things in 7, 8, and 9, which we needed to get out of our lives and before they destroy us. You know, we can be destroyed if we live in these things. And don't uh, move to, to get away from them. And they are in verse 7. In the which you also walk sometime. When you lived in them. When you were living in the world without Christ. However long that was. And even times when you had Christ. Then maybe you got off center just a little bit. It says but now you also put off all these. Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your own, out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds. Well, the old man was the man or the person that was there uh, before you were saved, and now you're a new person. A new person. Now you're a new life. And uh, so we need to put off these other things. And they, as I said a minute ago, these must be cut off before uh, they can destroy us. Although in verse 12, we learn that putting off fleshly desires is not enough for victory. It's... Uh, you can get rid of a bad habit, but many times it's hard to get rid of a bad habit unless you have something to replace it, amen? You know, and uh, I know I, that's been the case with me over the years, but um, we need things to replace that. <clears throat> and so we see this in verse 12. He says, put on. 
First he said put off the old things, the old man, and then put on. We learn by putting off fleshly desires is not enough for victory, but Paul writes, put on therefore in the place of worldly things as the elect, which you are, the saved of God, holy and beloved. He wants us to put off these things. So he put on something. Uh, put these things on that will replace the things that must be put off. Uh, because they will start to uh, work in your life. In, um, well, uh, Colossians, we'll see these things. We're in verse 12. He says, um, As the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on the bowels of mercies. Well, the bowels of mercies, if you uh, look it up, you start to study a little bit, is uh, really in the deepest part of us. That part of us that uh, really feels for other people and feels for those that are struggling. We talked about people this morning that, and uh, others that needed uh, help. And like uh, uh, Paul went to that man and, and he didn't quit till he accomplished uh, what he had accomplished. And now... He's got other things to work on him with. In the deepest part of us, the having pity or, or mercy or compassion, we need to put that on and take away the malice and the, uh, the, uh, uh, the anger and so forth that we have in our hearts maybe for somebody or something at, at times in life. Second thing is kindness. Um, let's call this excellence in uh, character. <coughs> kindness is something that is uh, gentleness and goodness, or other words that are very similar to kindness. And um, uh, to uh, furnish and to entreat them to come to Christ. You know, you can do everything in the world for a person and have compassion for them, but we must also realize that if they don't know Christ, <coughs> uh, they need to. And so we need to ask them to come to Christ, to entreat them, beg them. The third thing is humbleness of mind. He says here, humility. Uh, never putting ourselves above people. Go back uh, a book to Philippians chapter 2 verses 3 through 8. Oops, I'm in the wrong spot. There we go. Chapter 2 verses 3 through 8 says, let nothing be done through strife or vainglory. In other words, don't do things to make yourself look good. That's what uh, humbleness is all about. It's not uh, pr pr uh, proposing that you're better or that you're greater than others, but to uh, reach them on the level in which they are whatever that level is. Uh, never put yourself above others. And here's what he says, But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. What is a person who makes himself of no reputation? 
He doesn't take or she doesn't take the glory of God, right? So a person that doesn't uh, make themselves uh, of, re uh, of some reputation is saying, uh, I am what I am, and I'm only saved because God saved me, and, and I wouldn't have anything or be anything if it weren't for God. We give it to God. Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. This is what Jesus did. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Well, this is us. This is uh, what we're supposed to be. We're supposed to be uh, ourselves and uh, nothing more and nothing left and let God have us and control us and do the things He wants us to do and, <coughs> and give Him the honor and the glory. Now, back to... Colossians uh, chapter 3, verse 12, the next thing up was meekness. And meekness is the same thing really as gentleness. That is being kind and, and gentle and uh, not being abrasive and, uh, and creating a strife between uh, yourself and somebody else. But to try to do, well, to be peaceable, peaceable, with all men as much as it as lies within you. The fifth thing there was long suffering. I call that waiting with patience. Uh, temper everything we do with people uh, with len lenience. In other words, the things we're talking to people about and those people who become angry with us because we uh, want to uh, lead them to Jesus, well, meet that anger with a temperament of lenience, enduring, um, particularly when things don't come uh, just exactly the way you wanted them to. Uh, you know, uh, I think about people, people I've dealt with in uh, life, uh, you know, I, I, I dealt with a young boy we've talked about before for, uh, well, he passed away at 40, and I led him to Jesus at 15. That was 25 years. And believe me, it wasn't very rosy. Most of the time, was it done? Very difficult. And he was a complex individual. And his mother was a abstract being. <laughs> Sometimes and it took a lot of a lot of uh, uh, long suffering to uh, to get things done with them, but we did through Christ. Through Christ. Sixth thing is forbearing, to put up with, hold oneself up against uh, retaliation. You know. Sometimes people do things to us and we want to retaliate. We want to say something or we want to do something. And to make our point, make ourselves look better sometimes. And uh, we do it, whatever we can do. But that's not what God wants us to do. No, He wants us to put up with people, bear with them, and to... Hold ourselves steady against retaliation. In other words, don't let those kind of thinking, uh, thought processes, uh, enter in to where we can't control ourselves and we say and we do things we wish we hadn't done later. I don't know, anybody here ever said something or done something that you wish you hadn't done besides me? Yeah. It's easy to do, isn't it? If you just let go and you don't 
to try to control yourself and you feel uh, so much for that other person uh, that you're willing to be patient with them to accomplish the things necessary. Now, uh, the last thing there is forgiveness. That's uh, when I was studying it, pardon or rescue is uh, one way of looking at it. And um, uh, frankly, forgive. How do, how do you do that? How, well, where does that come from? Well, uh, let me ask you this. What did Jesus give us? What is the name, the word, that Jesus brought to us? When he looked at us, he could have looked at us in judgment, couldn't he? Because we were all guilty of something. More, more than maybe others, some of us, me, and maybe less than others, but all guilty of something as far as sin goes in life. And so he brought the doctrine of grace to us. And Spirit indwelled us, and that is grace. You see, what happened is, is that Jesus came, and his life and his doctrine, uh, he uh, prepared us to accept him for the, as Lord and Savior. We didn't know him as Lord and Savior till we started to study the Bible or somebody gave us some uh, of the Word and we started to understand that we needed a Savior. But we didn't know how to be saved. In fact, uh, generally speaking, somebody had to lead us in being saved. But the great leader and the great teacher and the great uh, person that... Uh, did the work, a lot of it was the Spirit of God and His grace. And here's why I say that. Grace is, dis is uh, uh, designed and has this by saying, by the divine influence upon the heart. That's grace and its reflection in our lives. We accept Jesus. Jesus gives the Spirit to us in our hearts so that we know how to live, how to be what God wants us to be. And so He directs us and we become a reflection of Christ through the Spirit in our lives. That's what happens. And sometimes I do a good job of it, and sometimes I don't do a very good job of it. Uh, sometimes I say things I shouldn't say. Sometimes I'm not as forgiving as I should be, but I never quit working at it. Amen? Amen. You got to work at it. You got to say, I want to put this thing on and do away with this other thing that I'm getting rid of. So put away wrong thinking and actions and put on these things that we discussed there as um, in, its, in those things place. Now, so verse 14, back to Colossians chapter 3 and verse 14. He says, and above all these things, put on charity. What is charity? Love. Thank you. That's exactly what it is. See, uh, we understand that, you know, there's three things there. There's, uh, uh, well, let's see, what are those three 
things. What are those two things besides uh, charity? Anybody remember? Come on, faith, love, and faith. Hope. Faith, hope, <coughs> and charity. But which is the greatest of these? Charity. Love. That's right. Because love puts away all other things. All other things that are worrying you. All other things that are uh, that we're angry about, all of the things that we uh, take personally, the things that people do, are put away by love. The greatest of these is love. You can be uh, uh, full of all other things, but what he says here is put on those things but above all those things, these things, put on charity, love, which is the bond of perfectness. Now, what does that mean? Well, love is the bond of perfection that bonds us to Jesus Christ. If it were not for our love for him, we wouldn't be bonded to him like we are. It is a love relationship. He is bonded to us because He loves us and we are bonded to Him because we love Him for what He's done for us and who He is. Now, let the peace of God rule in your heart. Verse 15. The peace of God. You know, when I got saved... There was a great peace in my life uh, because I knew Jesus Christ at that point. Now, I don't, didn't know what peace altogether was, and I didn't know how to use the peace that was in my life or how to respond to it uh, altogether when I trusted in Jesus Christ. But uh, I, I knew it was there, and I was no longer fearful fearful. You know, peace uh, uh, comes when you're not fearful. And, um, and it takes a place of fearfulness. Uh, when you know Jesus Christ, you know you're in the hands of the Creator. And well, what can man do to you that God does not allow? And, and many times me, uh, men have wanted to do things to us that God did not allow. How many times have we been protected by God? And we could feel the peace of that protection in our life. Gone into a hospital and, uh, and uh, wondering what was going to happen. And God gave us the peace to endure and to, uh, to live with him and to be thankful for God's blessings. In other words, seek the life feeling things from above and throw the evil of Satan and the world away so that uh, uh, whatsoever you do in life will be done in the name of Jesus Christ and to the glory of Christ and the Father and giving thanks to God, the Father for all things, the Lord Jesus, the Spirit of grace, the hope of eternal life, things that we sometimes take for granted but that we should not take for granted. Uplifting things. Let me, let's, let's look at, uh, no, Colossians, uh, chapter, right where we are, verse 16. Here's what verse 16 says. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. 
teaching and admonishing one another. You know, we learn from one another. We learn from the Word of God, and uh, mainly we learn, learn from the Spirit of God and the teachings of Christ. But we learn from one another, too, about things in life that we need to know. And, um, uh, and, um, and we get wisdom from each other, too. Teaching and admonishing one another by what? In psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. You know, sometimes... Uh, we're singing here on Sunday morning and we hit a hymn that is just special to me. How about you? You know, sometimes you have hymns that are really special to you and maybe not so much to the next person, but to you. And, and I do. Amazing Grace is one of them. And, I, you know, I think Amazing Grace is probably one of the greatest hymns in the, in the songbook and and um, when we used to go to the YDCs, there were two hymns that everybody wanted to sing uh, every week. And I, I, I tell you what, if they said I wanted, they wanted to sing it, we sang it. I never argued with that. If they wanted to hear this, we, they heard it. Well, one of them was Amazing Grace. And the other one was nothing but the blood. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Whew. What a hymn that is. Maybe we'll sing that one day. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can wash my sin away? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Wow. It's a great hymn. And I have to admit to you, that many a young boy or girl began to think about being saved from those two hymns. Hymns are not uh, presented as avenues of salvation, but believe me this, that verse that we just read, teaching, ad admonishing one another in songs, and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord, is a great verse. Now, if you would, turn back with me to Galatians. Galatians chapter uh, 5. In verses uh, 22 and 23. When I read that verse, uh, when I read that uh, Colossians 3.16, and then I come back to Galatians, uh, and I read uh, verses 22 and 23. And the verse says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love. Now, he put love first because love always has to be first. Don't forget now. Don't forget and put something in place of love because love will overcome anything. You can overcome anything if you will let love rule in your heart. No matter what it is, it can be overcome that way. So he says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. In other words, you can use these things right here to rule your life. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. In verse 25, if we live in the Spirit, 
let us also walk in the Spirit. If you live in the Spirit, you have the Spirit in your heart, in your soul, and you have the fruit of the Spirit working in you. So go ahead and do that. Live in the Spirit because He's in you, and then walk in the Spirit because He's in you, and you can follow Him in doing the things that need to be done. Can you feel the love And can you embrace the joy of those verses? In other words, when I read those verses, I understand there's more to life and there's more to me and there's more to people who are saved than we uh, think about all the time. And we need to think about these things as much as we can because they influence our daily life in every way that you can influence your life. You have to love first, though. You have to love people. No, no matter what they are, what they do. I love uh, um, Joe Biden because I want to see him saved. You understand that there's only one hope for him. Do you understand that today? There's only one hope for the world today. And that is Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And if we don't love them, they will not be saved. You'll never win somebody that you hate to Jesus. It only comes through love. And then joy. You know, Jesus said in Hebrews, for the joy that was set before him. He saw out there in the future, and he didn't see us necessarily, but he knew us because he is creator and we were created by him. All things were created by him. And he knows who we are and God gave us to our parents. And we could... Uh, uh, we could be a little unruly sometimes in life, but God loved us and He saw us and He looked at us with joy, us, because we put our trust in Him. And Christ was willing and joyful in His going to His death personally on the cross because he knew he was providing the way for us to know to know him and know the Father. And without him there wasn't any salvation. So I can feel that. I can feel that embrace of God in love and I can, in, uh, I can feel that joy that Christ has in him I can feel that in me because of the things he did. And when we embrace all of these things, peace and long-suffering and gentleness and goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance, as they course through our veins, we have them in us now, and they, they move back and forth through us, just moving, moving. The only thing that keeps us from being more than God, uh, uh, or, or more than, than we are, and the, the things that God wants us to be, is because uh, we don't feel those things in us moving. Uh, we don't look for them. And we don't try to be uh, sometimes what he wants us to be. Don't be afraid. Don't be fearful of doing the things of Christ and what he wants you to do. Just give yourself up and be what he wants. 
That was the greatest lesson I, one of the great lessons I learned in life. I am nothing by myself. I can do nothing by myself. I had to have God working in me and my willingness to give myself over to God to accomplish whatever I could accomplish for Him. And I got to tell you, I could have accomplished more if I had done it earlier in my life when I had early opportunities. I think about the people who might have been saved. Had I been a Christian earlier in life and had not been doing the things I was doing and I was living a Christian life and, and talking to people about it. Now many of them may have been saved, but uh, God could have used me to save to lead them to himself. So, today, let's focus on Galatians 5, 22 and 23, and on Colossians chapter 3, and uh, let's, let's make it up in our minds that uh, we're going to be uh, thinking upon uh, those things, and we're going to be encouraged by them, and we're going to be full of the Spirit because of them. And uh, we're going to be looking and uh, singing every day of the week. And um, I'm going to try to sing more oh, no. privately. <laughs> and um, uh, I'm going to do that because I feel good when I do it. Nobody else maybe feels good, but I do. And, um, I'll just crank up Bertha. Do we have nothing but the blood in our hymnal? Mm -hmm. How about us singing that at the end today? Okay. All right. Let's sing it. A couple, three more. 